A good entrepreneur knows how to pitch their story. Three small business owners will get their chance when they step onto an elevator with business guru and self-made millionaire Marcus Limonis. They each have only a moment to pitch their business, and only one will take home a check for $10,000, courtesy of the UPS store. This is the elevator pitch. My name is Jennifer Burrell, and my business is The Frock Shop. We are a designer dress rental service, so we allow women to rent fancy dresses for the biggest events in their lives. The inspiration for The Frock Shop came about a few years ago. I was actually cleaning out my closet, and I noticed I still had my prom dress and my wedding dress, and I just thought it was a huge waste of money. They have been sitting in my closet for years. I'd only worn them one time. And I just figured if men can rent tuxedos, then women should be able to rent dresses. So I started renting dresses with just the few dresses that were in my closet. The biggest challenge for my business that I've had to face is just getting capital. If we were awarded $10,000, we would use it for inventory. Uh, if we were to get more dresses in different sizes and a few more styles, then we could increase our customer base, and I think that would also increase our profitability. The pitch starts now. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? Good. I'm Marcus. I'm Jennifer Burrell. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Want to take a ride? Sure, sure. So what do you do? I have a designer dress rental business, and we rent designer dresses for all types of fancy events, like proms, weddings, black ties, things like that. Very nice. Our prices start really low at $40. The process is really easy. You choose your dress, look amazing in it at your event, and then you return it when you're done. And have you gotten into any more casual dresses that don't require you to be going to a black tie event? No. Like a Sunday lunch dress or a church dress or anything like that? I have not gotten into that. I've thought about it. How much revenue will you do this year? Uh, we're a small company, so honestly in revenue, probably about a little under $100,000. And so your margins are good. How much inventory do you have? Total right. dollars? Currently I would say about 15,000. So how many dresses is that? That's about 350 dresses. Okay. Yeah. How can I reach sense. you? Well, this here. Um, my card is inside of here. And then this is the information that we give to people that have never rented a dress before. Okay. This is a well done card. Thank you. It's a well done fly. You know what I love about it is I love the imagery that you've picked. It really tells me what you do. There's dresses on every single panel. Yes. We're, we sell clothing, so we have to show it on real women. So wow. everything we do is very visual when it comes to marketing. Well, we're almost at the top, so thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. So nice nice meeting, meeting you. Good luck to you. Thank you. I was nervous. Um, I think I was more excited than nervous, but when we actually got started, it was very conversational, so that helped to ease my nerves a little bit. I just kind of flowed with it and got some of my major points out, but no, I did not go exactly by my script. But it flowed okay and it's done now, so I'm excited and I'm happy. I really liked Jennifer and the Frock Shop's presentation. I thought her pitch uh, had enthusiasm and um, you could tell she really believes in what she's doing. I think more importantly, Jennifer has nailed what I think is a need in the marketplace. If Jennifer really wants to grow her profitability though, she has to expand the type of products that she's offering to the same database. A lot of people like to call themselves retailers, but there are some key fundamentals that truly makes them retailers. Number one is the customer experience. When the customer walks through the door, do they understand what your product offering is? Can they see your merchandising clearly? Are there helpers that understand the product just the same? Just because you have a storefront and you hang your sign out front and you unlock the door and you roll a rack in doesn't make you a retailer. Just because you have a register in the middle of your store doesn't make you a retailer. The best retailers in the world, even the small best retailers in the world, understand that they have to know their people, the ones that work there and the ones that shop there. They have to know their product, what they're selling and what customers actually want. And they have to have a process to deliver that experience. Uh, my name is Penae Kofi Bruce. I'm the creative director of Minion at Bridal, and we design heirloom gowns for modern brides. I'm a fantastic designer, and I am amazing with the brides. I'm a really good salesperson, and I think that's a good strength. 
The inspiration for Mignonette Bridal came from me designing my own gown. I was not really sure where to buy a gown. I wasn't having a lot of fun shopping, and really it was just a hard experience. And I was actually making a gown for another bride, and she turned to me and said, why aren't you making your own dress? And that was kind of a light bulb moment for me, and I've just been designing them ever since. Mignonette is definitely operating at capacity. With five employees, we can only produce so much, and $10,000 would be huge. That would allow us to create more jobs in the shop and then start responding really quickly to the needs of the market. We want to build an empire. Hi, how are you? I'm Panay. It's nice to meet Panay, you. Panay, nice to meet you. So, let me tell you a little bit about our business. I'm the creative director of Mignonette Bridal, okay. and we design heirloom gowns for modern brides. Nothing for guys. Nothing for guys, unfortunately, mm. but plenty for girls. Okay. So, are you the designer? I am the designer, and I'm also the head seamstress. So you design them, mm -hmm. and you cut them, and you sew them? Well, right now I have a staff, so we're all doing everything. Let me show you our catalog. Is this your business this card? This is our business card. The challenge for us right now is that there's only five of us, and our goal for the next year is to scale up. So I'd like to start producing and then offer a line to the wholesale market. Is there demand on the wholesale market? There is absolutely a demand. What's it's, the price point? The price point starts at 26 and goes up to $4,000. $26? Yes, $2,600. $2,600? Mm -hmm. Is that not a lot for a wedding dress? No, not at all. What can a wedding dress cost? Oh man, wedding dresses can cost up to fifteen thousand dollars. Fifteen? Absolutely. Forget it. Let's go and get married. <laughs> Let's just wear shorts and go on vacation. <laughs> Do you think you're charging enough for your product? I think at this point we are. Previously we weren't. This Do you have any pricing year. resistance? Like, um, you know, we did. What are the margins? Our margins are actually fairly high. So right now our margin is about forty percent, which is good for something that's being made in the U.S. Not oh. really. <laughs> well, true. listen, we're at the top, but it was nice meeting you. You too. Take care. Thank you so much. Good luck to you. Thank you. I think I did okay. I definitely got a little bit nervous, and I have a really hard time just because I'm so passionate about what we're doing, just focusing on one thing to talk about. So I wish that I had all the time with him so I could tell him more and more and more. I thought Panay was good, not great. Uh, when you get into an elevator, you get into a meeting and you have a very limited amount of time, your enthusiasm really needs to be there. Your smile, your eyes, the way you project your voice, people feed off of that. People say first impressions are lasting impressions. I also think that the way you project yourself with enthusiasm and excitement, that makes a big difference too. If you're not excited about your business, how am I going to be excited? My name's Nathaniel Weiss. I'm the founder of Natural Me Beauty Box, and we're an online retailer and monthly beauty sampling service helping people discover health-conscious, non-toxic beauty products. I'm a two-time cancer survivor. Uh, I was diagnosed uh, when I was 16 years old in the middle of high school, and um, that's why it's really important to me to play a role in um, not only using healthier consumer products for myself, but helping people also uh, transition to healthier products and live healthier lifestyles. You know, I think Natural Me Beauty Box should win the $10,000 because really we're a, a purpose-driven company. We're in this to help people. And that's really the foundation of why we created this company and what our mission is. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. good. I'm Marcus. I'm Nathaniel. Nice to meet you. Want to take a ride? I'd love to. Okay. So tell me about yourself. So I'm the founder of Natural Me Beauty Box. We're a health conscious, purpose driven company helping people discover organic beauty products online. Why'd you start the business? I'm a two time cancer survivor. Two times. Two times. Put it up Not there two one times. Two. One. Can I give you another one? Two. There you go. And I'm really passionate about uh, helping people discover uh, health conscious products. Now there's a balance between helping people and making money and how yes. do you find that balance? Um, 
So we have a few uh, different services that we provide. Our subscription box, we mail out monthly. Uh, we contain about five product samples of non-toxic beauty products. What do you charge for the box? We charge $24.99 a month. What does it cost you to make? It costs us about 5 to $10 per box. So this is essentially nothing more than a lead generator. That's exactly what To transition is. them into the e-commerce exactly. world. Exactly. But right. we're taking advantage of revenue from the subscription as well as from the online retail. Well, great. Yeah. We're almost at the top, but almost. I will tell you that I thank you for starting a business that has some meaning that's personal to you. How do I reach you if I want to talk to you some more? Um, here's my business card. How come your name, oh, there's your name. It's really small. You should be proud of your name. You're I know, a survivor. I, I know. I Make that be, name huge. Should yeah, I should. Who's in charge of these? Um, I have a design uh, people that I work with. They made a model. Make it bigger today. I'll tell them that. It was nice meeting Thank you. you, Marcus. Good luck to you. It was a pleasure. Thank Take you. Take care. Meeting Marcus was a wonderful experience. It was really exciting. I was a little bit nervous, but I was really happy to be able to pitch Natural Me Beauty to him. And I think I have a good shot of winning. I thought Nathaniel's 60 second pitch was solid. He knew he, what he wanted to say, and while he didn't come in with pom-poms cheering, he was very clear in his message, and he got across one thing that I thought was important, why he started the business. That resonated with me, and it got my attention. $10,000 is on the line. Who did Marcus feel delivered the perfect elevator pitch? Will it be Nathan from Natural Me Beauty, Panay with Mignonette Bridal, or Jennifer from The Frock Shop? I wanted to tell each of you that the job that you did today was spectacular. Participating in the first UPS store elevator pitch competition was not only a pleasure for me and I learned a lot, but I hope you did as well and made some great friendships. There are over 4,500 UPS store locations across the country. Today, one of you is gonna be awarded $10,000. Not a thousand, but $10,000. And George here, who's also a UPS store franchisee, is gonna tell you a little more. You'll also be receiving a small business toolkit from the UPS store. That includes everything from printing, packing, shipping, and shredding to help further fuel your business. That's great. I wanted to take a minute and give you some feedback about your presentation. I know that walking into an elevator while you're watching the dial go up, thinking you're gonna get to the top floor is stressful. But that's how the real world is. Sometimes you're gonna meet people and you're only gonna have a brief second to make an impression. Nathaniel, I thought that your pitch came across unbelievably sincere. The fact that you're a two-time cancer survivor and that you truly believe in what you're doing says a lot about business with purpose. But you know that it's important to understand the difference between a business with purpose and a business with profits. Absolutely. And you gotta find the line where you can do both of them. Absolutely. I'm concerned about the box business, the mm -hmm. subscription box business, mm -hmm. but I like the fact that you have an e-commerce site mm -hmm. that allows those same customers to buy all of those products online. Yes. They're special, they're unique, they're not mainstream products, and they add real value to people's lives. Yes. Panay, I like the fact that you have such heart and passion about what you do, and that you're really integrated in your business. So often you find fashion designers that just want to sketch and walk away and just have the glamorous part of the job. But the fact that you design and you make some of the dresses yourself and you sell them tells me that you really believe in what you're doing. I know that the wedding business is not a fad. People are going to get married every day. But you have to make sure that the price point of your product is something that everybody can live with. Okay? I know you're capable of it. Jennifer, I think your business idea isn't new, but I think you're onto something big. While there's competitors in the space, us guys have been really serviced for years with tuxedo shops and shirt rentals and pants rentals, mainly because we probably couldn't get dressed without it. But for ladies to give them an opportunity to dress up and wear elegant gowns, and you're providing that service, is not only you understanding the market, but you understanding fashion. One of the things that I'd like you to think about differently is the, the audience that you're serving is looking for a specific style of dress. You're doing a great job capturing those customers. But once you capture them, I want you to figure out how to get more money out of each customer. And so I want you to widen your horizon by carrying products that you think are close to what you carry today, but will allow one of your existing customers 
to rent another dress more often and maybe even do it three, four, or five times a year. Today only one person can be a winner and the UPS store, the 4,500 franchisees, along with my friend George, have to pick one winner. So, today's winner of the UPS store elevator pitch competition today is Nathaniel. Oh, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. I just won the UPS store elevator pitch 2016 trophy. I feel so excited. I'm ecstatic. Thank you guys.